Two shooters were initially believed involved in the mass shooting. One of those shooters now dead. There are 27 victims, 20 children, seven adults. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. Another mass shooting, this time in the neighboring cities of Midland and Odessa, Texas, in multiple locations. There was confusion about where the bullets were coming from, or even if they were bullets. The United States leads the developed world in gun-related homicides per 1 million people. With the rise in mass shootings, gun control has become the forefront of many political debates in America. Due to the Second Amendment, politicians and lawmakers must balance the safety of the people with their right to bear arms. The Second Amendment is codified and enshrined in the Bill of Rights. The reason it is there, and if you look at the context of the time that it was written, it is there because our founders, the framers of that amendment, had just come through a very bloody revolution in which they were trying to come out from under an oppressive, tyrannical regime at the time the King of England. Um, and the way that we were able to come out from under that tyrannical, oppressive regime is the ability to uprise and defend ourselves with the firearms that they had at that time on their farms. It is the, the one amendment that protects the others. If we don't have the right to fight back against a tyrannic, potential tyrannical government, then we are subjects and not citizens. In order for a government to oppress an individual, they must first remove the ability of that individual to defend themselves. There are people who use guns legally every single day to protect themselves from criminals, and we ought to fight to protect the rights of those law-abiding citizens to continue to defend themselves as the Second Amendment of the Constitution allows. Our Constitution requires that uh, before a person's rights can be taken away, uh, they have to have uh, due process and the law has to be applied uh, equally, equal protection. Due process is a procedure that the federal court system must abide by, providing fair and equal treatment to citizens. The Fifth Amendment protects against the deprivation of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. If you have had your rights um, taken from you through through due process in a court of law um, because due to mental health or mental illness obviously you can lose a right to have a firearm but those are all um, embedded in state and federal laws um, so it is not that difficult uh, to buy a firearm but there are restrictions on the ability to purchase a firearm the idea of gun restrictions are a way that democratic candidates are trying to take a step towards gun control 97% of Americans agree with universal background checks when purchasing a firearm. Universal background checks. The simple idea that if you're going to exercise your Second Amendment rights and buy a weapon, we should check to see if you are violent, if you are a terrorist, if you're likely to do harm with that deadly weapon. In my perspective as a lawmaker, I do think that we all have the right to be able to bear arms. However, if you have a criminal background, you should not have that right. You've lost that right. We need to, one, expand background checks, to have background checks take place at gun shows and on the internet, because the fact is 40% of gun sales take place through those other sources. Universal background checks would require firearm transactions to be recorded and go through the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. To subvert this law, buyers seek out private dealers creating problems for local businesses. To me as a gun shop owner, when I purchase a used firearm from someone, I don't have the ability to check serial number to see if the gun is stolen before I get it. When people ask me, you know, do we have enough laws, I said, I believe we do have enough laws. Are we enforcing the laws on the books um, efficiently and sufficiently? Many Americans are questioning the effectiveness of legislation that restricts the type of firearms available to the public. In 2017, handguns were responsible for 64% of U.S. gun murders, rifles were involved in 4%, and shotguns were involved in 2%. We've decided that somewhere in between a slingshot and a nuclear weapon, we can draw a line. And that's not unconstitutional, it's common sense. The Second Amendment of the Constitution was written over 200 years ago when a good gunman might get three shots off a minute with a, with a musket. It's hard for me to believe the Founding Fathers envisioned a world where one man could or would fire 400 rounds a minute into a crowd of people. Gun violence is no different than any other type of violence. It does not come from the tool that is used 
to perpetrate the violence. The violence comes from the individual. Taking guns is not the, is not the solution to the problem. You know, the definition of a weapon is anything you can use to do bodily harm to somebody else. A aluminum baseball bat, a butcher knife, uh, something like that is still considered a weapon. The focus is not whether or not we should be allowed to bear arms, but whether or not we have gun safety procedures in place. Our vision in 2020 is that politicians will use their influence to enforce the laws already in place to limit the spread of illegal guns in a way that protects our right to bear arms. We may not all agree on what steps should be taken at the federal level to address this crisis, but can we at least agree that something needs to be done to combat the epidemic of gun violence in this country? Oh,